Hi, I'm Pat Wolf, one of five evaluators from North America. We've made this tape so that you'll be able to see what evaluation is all about. And the tape will start right from preparing your horse to actually having your horse evaluated. Now the judge is going to look at your horse and he's going to have a score sheet and there's going to be 50 points on that score sheet. So he's looking at your horse every part of it. So when you finish with the score sheet, you'll be able to take this home and when you're preparing for breeding, you'll be able to choose an animal that will match your score sheet or make your score sheet stronger. Now, the main thing of an evaluation is to keep the breed strong. The Norwegians have been evaluating horses for over 100 years, and the breed is very strong in Norway. And we're trying to do the same thing here in North America. Okay, in order to get a horse ready for an evaluation, it needs to be uh, clean and trimmed, and, uh, and uh, I will start trimming the mane, and I start from the top, and all I'm going to do is just clean this up a little bit. Now the mane, when you're finished, the arc should be halfway between the ears and the withers. When I get the mane nice and tidy, I'll go and I'll cut off the goat hairs. And the goat hairs are the hairs that are underneath the chin. And I'll just trim them off. Take all those goat hairs off. When that's finished, I'll pick up the brush and I'll start brushing from the head all the way down the body. And I make sure I do the legs and also you want to make sure that you do the feathers. When I get to the tail, I'll first take my hands and I will separate any kinks on it, any twists, and then I'll take the brush and I'll brush it out. And I don't brush at the beginning because the brush will take some hairs. I mean, you don't want to remove any more hairs than necessary. Go to one side and then go to the other side and do the same thing. Start from the head down. Make sure you get those legs and clean those feathers off nicely. Make sure there's no sawdust on the belly. All the way down. Then when I'm down here, I'm going to clean the feet. And for evaluation, you should blacken the feet with hoof black. It just makes the horse look a little more fancy. Also in preparation, when I put the halter on, I have a nice tidy halter, and I make sure that the halter, the nose band, is two fingers away from the cheekbone. And it's not sloppy, it's nice and clean underneath. This horse is ready to be taken down and be evaluated. But before we do that, I will take the horse into the ring and let her loosen up a little bit, stretch those muscles, and then we're ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna bring the horse into the round pen, and just to get her to loosen up the joints a bit, just like a, like a runner. The runner has to stretch, loosen joints up before he starts running. So I'll just get her out of slow trot, and you'll see that she's a, her steps are quite close because she is a little bit stiff, just came out of the barn. And then I'll get her going a little faster. And now you'll see that she's stretching a little bit more. The back foot is landing where the front one was. And just to give a little bit more exercise, I'll put her into a canter. Canter. And this way she loosens up the front end and the back end at the same time. Steady. Steady. Now reverse, do the same thing in the opposite direction. Now she's a little bit more free now. Put her into a canter, canter. And she's loosening up all those muscles, joints, and she's ready to go into the ring.
Okay, the horse is, is uh, being brought in and it's standing on a piece of plywood. Now we're, we're using a piece of plywood now because what it does, it makes it um, equal for all horses that are being evaluated. Sometimes the ground is uneven and uh, you get a different angle view of the horse's uh, feet compared to its leg. So when a horse is set up, the very first thing we do, we start evaluating the head. And number one is I will take a look at the teeth and make sure that the bite is, um, is correct and that means the uppers and lowers will match. Then I will look at the, um, at the profile, uh, profile of the head and I look at the proportion. Now the proportion in length means that it has to be proportional for the whole body of the horse. And I can do that by just measuring the horse's head from his pole to the tip of his, of his nose, and he's, this horse is reading 22 inches. Now, proportionally, the neck should be approximately one and a half times the length of the head. So I will measure that, and that should be uh, 22 and a half is 11, 33 inches. So from the pole to the tip to the middle of the withers is 33 inches. Now also, proportionally for the body, for the head, it should be the same height from the chestnut to the ground, 22, and also the hawk should read 22, and which it does. Now, it's very important that these measurements are the same on these legs because if one leg is longer than the other one, the movement will not be as, um, as great. Also, the head should be from the hawk to the staple, should also be 22 inches. Okay? So it's very important that the head does balance the, the whole animal. Now, also on the head, we have to look at the eye set. See that the eyes are on the side of the head because this horse has to be able to see someone from behind. And if I go behind the horse, I should be able to see both eyeballs at the same time. But I also check to see how wide the forehead is and the eyes are set to the side. And I'll check the profile of the, of the head. There should be it straight or a nice, light, um, nice small dish. And this horse has a slight dish to her, um, to her face. Then I'll look at the nostrils. The nostrils should be large, and this is necessary for the horse to get air for breathing. And I check the, uh, the, the, the muzzle, make sure that the lower lip is not uh, fast or underneath the, uh, the upper lip. And I'll look at the jowls. It should be nice and large, and they should be separated, not dished in. Should be, you should be able to see them again, looking at the front of the head, I should be able to see both jaws at the same time. The ears. The ears should be proportional to the head. And again, that is the, uh, the uh, ear shouldn't be too large or too long or too small, but it should be wide so that the horse can hear. It should be nice and wide here so that the horse will be able to hear all the sounds. Generally speaking, this is, uh, is a uh, typical fjord head. The neck should be proportional to the head, and we've already measured that, and it should be one and a half times the length of the head. Now, this is ideal measurements I'm talking about. Not every horse is the same. And then the neck should be a clean throat latch. That means it's not thick here. It's nice and light and thin, which this horse has. And then there should be a clean underline, and that means a straight line from the, from the head to where the neck attaches onto the shoulder. Now, the attachment on the upper part of the neck should be come from the withers right onto the neck in a straight line. This horse has just a slight little dip here, but the underline is very nice. It ties in above the point of the shoulder, which is also very good. The, um, the neck should have a slight little arch to it on the top and again a straight line on the bottom. You don't want to have a U-neck coming in from the bottom. Now ideally this is a mare. Mares have just a slight arch to them 
and the stallion will have a, a nicer arch to it, larger arch. We'll go on to the, the body, and the body to start off with proportionally should be cut into three blocks. It should be the same distance from the point of the shoulder to the uh, withers, from the withers to the point of the hip should be the same, and then from the point of the hip to the buttock. It should be a nice clean top line, comes smoothly from the withers right around the uh, round, rounded croup. And then the other under line should become a straight line and then and then turn up slightly as you get to the Gaskin area. This horse is up a little bit. She could be a little bit lower, but the advantage of being up is that there is lots of room for this leg to move. So when she trots, you want that leg to move out. The chest should be nice and white, and there should be lots of room between the legs. This horse is a little bit narrow, and I'd like to see a little more space between the legs. And what I'm looking for on a, on a leg, it's a straight line from the shoulder all the way down to the leg, to the cannon bone, and end up at the back of the hoof. And then you want to look at the angle of the hoof itself and then the angle of the pastern compared to the rest of the horse. Now the angle of the pastern is also the angle of the shoulder. We're looking straight on, the leg should be straight right from the shoulder right down to the center of the hoof. This horse is a little bit off, she's a little bit in on the, the knees. The size of the cannon bone is quite important because a thousand pound horse needs an eight inch cannon bone to carry its weight. Most beards are around the thousand pounds. Now if a horse is up to 1200 pounds, you're going to have to have an eight and a half inch cannon bone. The back leg should be straight, line from the center of the hip down through the hook, down to the pastern, and the hind legs are slightly turned out on, uh, on all horses. And to check the leg, it should be a straight line from the buttock straight down to the cannon bone to the ground. If the cannon bone is not in this plane, on this line, and if it's a head, that means the, the horse has a post leg, and if it's out, that means the horse is camped out. In other words, he's too long in this area here. What the judge will be looking for on the walk movement is that the horse tracks and that means the back foot has to land where the front one was. And also on the profile you want to see that back leg, lots of movement, front, lots of movement and the back foot goes over the track of the front foot. coming straight on, we want to look at the front end. Okay, so the next step will be to trot the horse. And we trot the horse on the profile and that way we can see how the action of the hawks, how far the horse reaches the front legs and, and the uh, movement of the hind legs. So what I'm looking for is a horse where the hind legs will go past the print of the front legs. Steady, steady. After the walk and trot, the horse is brought back to the board and the judges make their final evaluation. The judges will be looking for the overall impression of the horse and its breed type. The overall impression is based on three points, markings, balance and harmony, and condition. Ideally, the horse exhibits the characteristic zebra striping on the legs, has a properly proportioned head, neck, body, and legs. And finally, the coat should be shiny and the muscles well-defined. Breed type is a factor of the presence, substance, and gender of the horse. Does the horse look like a feared? Does it have the right attitude and personality? The muscles and bones of the horse must be in proportion to the size and type of the horse. There are three types. 
light, medium, and heavy. Finally, the judges want to see that the horse has the characteristics suited to its gender. A stallion should look like a stallion and a mare like a mare. A field that has good conformation, good movement, and good disposition can be used in many disciplines. Everything from hauling wood on the farm to presenting in the show ring. This is a beautiful breed. Let's keep it strong. <laughs>